Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're going to be setting up our own AI super cluster over the public internet. That's right, I've got a MacBook Pro over here, 128 gigabytes RAM. I'm going to be connecting that up to my Mac Studio 512. We're going to be working them both together to make a distributed compute super cluster that is actually running over the internet. So I'm going to see how it goes. And to make it double interesting, the connectivity I'm going to be using is my mobile phone. I'm going to be using that as a hotspot. So we're going to be boom, boom, from the towers back down to the computers. And I've only got one bar of reception. So for, for barely one bar of reception, 4G. So imagine trying to watch 4K on this connection. If it even works, that would be amazing. So let's just see what we can do. So I'm gonna jump in now. I'm gonna be using Inference Up version 1.6. It's actually live on the App Store now. Okay, over here, added support for Kimi K2 thinking and added distributed compute support. And thanks so much for the lovely reviews. So with Inference Up over here, I'm gonna be so I'm going to be running it and also be showing you how to set it up at the end of the video, but let's just get to the juice. So to get started, I'm going to jump onto my server, which I've logged in using remote screen sharing. Inside the Inferencer app, I've got the server tab and I'm going to just start the server. And over here, I've got local network discovery, allow internet connections and allow distributed compute. I'm going to go into the settings at the end, but let's just all get it all working. So in my app over here on my MacBook Pro, I'm going to go into server and just make sure the server is connected. So it's connected right now. I can even have it to auto connect. So that's really cool. And now these are all the models that are available on the server. I've got GPT OSS 120B. I'll tap on that distributed compute button and it should just start magically all connecting up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write a story and we're seeing we're getting 37 tokens a second and this is running over Wi-Fi. We're sharing the memory between the two computers and you might think, okay, the Mac Studio 512 can already run GPT OSS. So let's go for something bigger. We're gonna launch Kimi K2 Thinking. This model is 500 and something gigabytes so it can't be it can't fit inside the Mac Studio 512. So we're gonna be sharing the memory of both these computers. So I'll click on that distributed compute button. And as you can see, it's loading the model on the server and it's also loading the model on our application. So it's gonna be sharded together and it just loaded partial of the model on this computer. And most of the model is gonna be fitting into the memory of the 5112 Mac Studio. And let me just go into activity monitor here just to see what's going on. And we can see that the model on the MacBook Pro is using 68 gigabytes of RAM and on the Mac Studio, it's still loading away and we've used up 200 gigabytes so far. So actually, while that model is loading on the server here, you can actually go ahead and start a prompt. So I'm gonna say, write a story over here and it will start telling you the loading progress also just while you wait. So you have an idea of what's going on and this is running over Wi-Fi. So we're just getting some baseline figures to see how fast it can go. Obviously it can go faster if we do Thunderbolt connection and all that stuff. And there's lots of optimizations that's still still there to be made in, in the industry. We call them low hanging fruit. There's a lot of low hanging fruit to be picked up so we can make this faster, but we're going 19 tokens a second. And this is over 500 gigabytes the, the, the one trillion parameter Kimi K2 think model is running at 19 tokens a second. That's amazing, that's all good. But we wanna see it connecting over the internet. So I'm gonna hotspot it up. I'm excited about this. This is gonna be fun. Mobile hotspot and again, I've actually, I've got two bars. I've got two bars so it might run a little bit faster. No, no, it's back down to one bar. So this could be one of those situations where you have to wave your phone to hopefully get a better reception. We're gonna find out over here. So to connect up, I'm gonna go into server here and rather than using the local discovery IP address or the local discovery computer name, which is auto detected as XStudio because that's the name of my computer, I have to get my public IP address. So you can just, I guess the easiest way to do it is just jump onto a service like what is my IP and it will tell you your IP, your IP address here. And I've also enabled the ports to be forwarded to the computer on my local network. So the way it works is on your router, has a connection to the internet. So the, the ports, they connect to the router and the router tells which computer owns that port to listen to. If you ever set up like a multiplayer game online or anything like that, you might be experienced in this. Again, I'll show how to set up at the end of the video, but let's just all get up and running because I've already set it up here. So I'm gonna paste in my IP address just like that. 
and hopefully connect will work. So I'm going to click connect. And no, it won't work because I need to switch my Wi-Fi over to my hotspot. This is going to be fun. So I'm now running my MacBook Pro. It's connecting over Wi-Fi to my hotspot. And again, we're getting two bars at the moment, 4G. Screen sharing is no longer viable because we're gone. What I'll do for visibility is run another speed test. So normally I get around 300 megabits per second download and 19 megabits per second upload. Now I'm actually paying for 400 megabits per second. So I'm getting the economy. I need to take that up with my ISP. But anyway, so let's just run it again. But this time over hotspot, as you can see, we're getting 20, 30 megabits per second on a download, which is actually pretty good. We only need for this model two megabytes a second for it to be viable. There is optimization that can make it down to one, lots of improvements to be made, like I said, but on the uploading there, we're getting 1.73, 1.7 bits, megabits per second. So we're gonna be bottlenecked on that side there. So let's just close that up here and see if we can connect to our server. So I'll click connect and boom, we have made the connection. So we are connecting over to communicate, communicate to, over our um, mobile network. Now, the good thing about it is because the model is already loaded into memory, I don't need to do that situation again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write a story and just see how slow it goes over. We're doing 4G, one bar of reception, and it's running, it's connecting. It's actually processing the prompt right now, and we're getting five, four tokens a second. So three and a half tokens a second, I'm going to start waving my phone to see if I can get a better Wi-Fi hotspot single. I've, I've boosted it up. Now we're getting three and a half. <laughs> when I have my phone behind my head, it's gone back up. <laughs> we're getting 3.4 tokens a second. I'm going to put it on the table and it might slow down. All right. So, so this is actually running. So just to recap, I've got my Mac Studio. This guy is connected to my home network and I've got my MacBook Pro and that guy is connecting to my mobile phone over Wi-Fi to the 4G network with one bar of reception. So what's happening is my MacBook Pro is talking to my mobile phone. The mobile phone is talking to the cell tower, which is far away. And that cell tower is pinging it back to my ISP, bringing it back to my connection, my, my, my LAN connection, connecting it to my Mac Studio, which is sitting over there. And then they're sending the journey back. So we've got a big, massive round trip happening there, but we're inferencing Kimi K2 thinking at 3.34 tokens a second. So things can only get faster than that. If you um, have ever tried to watch a 4K video using a one bar 4G connection, one bar, one bar. Yeah, it runs very, very slow, a lot of buffering, but if you connect it up to broadband, it'll be a lot faster. So potentially, Anyone out there with a Mac Studio or a MacBook Pro wants a tag team together so we can inference some models, uh, we, can, we can now do this over the internet. That is, and it's gonna be faster than this. This is just a, a demonstration because I don't have a second connection to demonstrate this experience. So how does it work? If you wanna do this yourself, I don't recommend using a mobile network. The fact that you can is amazing, but I don't recommend you using a mobile network. Use broadband and it'll run a lot faster. And um, Let's just do one more model just to see an idea about the theoretical maximum. If you did want to inference at 4G one bar levels, I'm going to go Quen 3, 1.7B, 4 bit. And I'll connect that up to my server. It's going to load hopefully straight away. Wait, first, actually, it needs to unload that big 500 gigabyte model from the server and load this one back in. This one is loaded now. So, and we're getting <laughs> five five and a half to five tokens a second. So this limitation is purely to do with my hotspot being 4G and one bar. So that is the, the limitation there. Again, if you have a faster internet connection, everything will run a lot faster. And in case you're wondering, even though it was inference over distributed compute on the internet, you still can do all the token inspection stuff. So instead of woman, you can say young, mystery, you're also thinking of magical, token entropy over here. So when it was writing the story, when it went to the main character, it wasn't sure about if it will say maybe, or if it will start talking about Clara. So let's just disconnect that and I'll show you how to set it up. So I'm using Inferencer 1.6. So it's again, it's available on the App Store. We've got a Windows version coming soon as well. So stay tuned for that. In settings, it's in preview modes. So distributed compute needs to be enabled. And in your server settings, 
you need to have allow internet connections, which means people can connect to your server from online and you have allow distributed compute. So you need to also take a note of your server port and your distributed compute port. The server port is kind of like your security guard, the bouncer at the front and your distributed compute is the door around the back where all the activity happens. So you need to enable both those ports and forward them to your local network. So I'll give you an example on how to do that. So as an example here, I've got this firewall called OpenSense, or you can log in straight to your router or the router settings will be slightly different, but you need to go into a port forwarding sort of page. And you can see that I've forwarded my ports 54321 and 54322, which are the ports that I've specified here on my server, 54321 and 54322. And I forward that onto the IP address of 192.168, which is the IP, the local IP address of my Mac Studio. If you ever wanted to find out your local IP address, you just go into settings and you go into your internet connection and you click on details and that will tell you inside TCP IP, it'll tell you IP address. And then you forward that port onto it and then that port will be exposed for anyone connect to, to connect to online. Now, of course, the distributed compute, it's only gonna allow connections if you enable allow internet connections. So if you're not doing this distributed inference, turn that feature off because you don't want randos trying to connect to your computer. In the future, I'm gonna add in like a block list and all that kind of stuff, maybe a regional block list, all this kind of cool stuff or a loud list, but right now, the way it works is you have the, the computer open to the internet or closed to the internet and open to the LAN only. And uh, yeah, the first person that connects to your server hopefully will be you because you're hopefully the only one that's gonna know your IP address and that uh, you'll get that there. And then you get that one, what is my IP? You paste it inside here, you click connect and you are connected. So as a treat, we're gonna do one more model. Let's do Apertus, the Swiss European model. Is it any good? Let's see distributed compute, it's running that connected really fast. I guess um, I'm doing um, a greedy loading situation, which means that it tries to keep the most amount of free RAM on each of your computers. So right now, most of the model is being loaded on the Mac Studio with very, very minimal portion being loaded on the MacBook Pro because this model can fit into memory. But it's just an example to show you how distributed compute works. So I'll write a story. Let's see how good the Swiss people are at doing AI. So we're getting three, 2.8, 2.7, 2.2, two, two and a half tokens a second. Now you've got to remember, I'm also running OBS on the screen. I'm doing a lot of stuff. And the most important factor, limited factor is I'm running it using the hotspot. As an example, if I disconnect this up and I launch back into my Wi-Fi, I'm going to go into my 5G Wi-Fi. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go 2G Wi-Fi because that is slower than 5G Wi-Fi, but it should still be fast enough to get some fast inferencing. So I'm gonna make sure now I'm gonna connect to the local server, no longer to the internet. And now we're getting, was it 11 tokens a second. So even my 2G Wi-Fi is fast enough to run this model very, very fast. So the difference between 2G and 5G Wi-Fi, very, very minimal. 5G Wi-Fi and Thunderbolt, very, very minimal. But 2G Wi-Fi and 4G, which, which is a lot slower, by the way, um, 4G one bar reception, Potentially, if you've got 5G on your phone or actually four bars, it should run a lot faster, but that is the situation where it is. Let me know what you guys think. I mean, I've had a lot of few people commenting saying that they got computers with low RAM, so they're not able to run these large models. Well, if you've got a friend, you can always share your IP addresses, connect to each other and start tag teaming away. In this version, it's working as a relay race. So the way it works is one computer, starts the inferencing on its part of the model that's got in memory and then it hands over the compute over to the next computer and then once it's finished it hands it back to the other guy and there is downtime in between so it's kind of like a, a tag team match where only one guy's in the ring doing the work and then he needs to tag in and then the other guy gets to do the work in a, in a future version we're going to do batching which the idea is we're going to have two rings so rather than one guy waiting for the other guys to tag in both of them are going to be fighting two different opponents at the same time they'll tag and then they'll swap opponents so we should be doubling the performance for free so you do my work i do your work i do your work you do my work and just swap around ruin it that way should get the same tokens per second and uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be a cool way to have the excuse to connect to other people online. So do you want that feature? Do you want like kind of like a, do you want like a public exchange where everyone just has their computers that are willing to connect to the distributed network for inferencing these super large models, connecting more than two computers, all that kind of stuff coming soon. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.